at this point of training camp are the it's like the dog days almost, right? Are the guys hitting a wall or do you still see this team going forward? Coach Kleiman is really good at, um, you know, we're not going to blitz them, blitz them, blitz them, and then taper. You know, he, he's we, we've got a plan. We've got a progression uh, that him and Coach True have worked on throughout the summer of, you know, rarely do we have consecutive really rugged practices. So we might go a, a, a really rough and tumble practice followed by maybe an easier day on their legs. And we try to keep it that way and build them up that direction. We did it last uh, fall, too, and we felt that they were fresh early in the year and we were able to keep them fresh throughout. So I don't know. I think the grind is more mental, and I think we're starting to get over that hurdle right now because of the installation. You know, you get into um, day one, two, three are usually pretty easy. You get into four, five, and six, and you start losing a few mentally. Seven, eight, nine, it really piles on guys and only the strong survive. We're over that hurdle now, and we're starting to get on the backside of that, and guys are starting to catch back up to the install a little bit, and concepts are starting to click, so it's starting to look a little faster out there. And you see this as maybe your deepest defense that you've had since you've been here? I would say so. I would say so, and that's hard to say because I haven't seen some of those guys that we're counting on in games yet, but ability-wise, there's no question about it. Coach uh, Tui said something about Damian Ela Leo maybe being – a starter this year, has he kind of taken off and just kind of grabbed that role? Yeah, uh, you know, him and Uso are, are very good players. And, um, you know, if I'm being honest, Uso probably has some physical things that Damian doesn't have. But Damian's just such a natural uh, leader, great voice, uh, always does things right, just rock solid. He's been great. He's been unbelievable. Um, so those two are going to be splitting a lot of the reps, I would guess. Joe, how many practices have you done so far? This was 12 today. Sounds right. Yeah, <laughs> it all runs together on me, man. I think it was 12 today. From start to finish or to start to where you're at right now, what has specifically impressed you the most about the defense? I think we're playing with more speed now. Um, and and that's and we, we were playing fast. I thought the first few days, you know, when I, I sat back and looked, especially when you looked at the secondary, like those guys are playing fast, and I think it's gotten even better. There hasn't been any um, anybody putting taking their foot off the gas. I mean, it's just been. Um, I think these guys are really driven, and and that's uh, uh, you know I kind of felt that throughout the spring and the summer, but you don't really know until they show it to you with their actions, and I think that's one action that that shows me that we have a really mature group, that we, we come every day, we, we, we practice our butts off. And you're playing against a pretty good offense. Yeah, I mean, you know, talent-wise, they're good. But the other thing that, that I always appreciate about our offense is the variety of things we see. We're going to see RPO game. We're going to see quarterback run game. We're going to see downhill run game. We're going to see eye backs. We're going to see 13 personnel. We're going to, you know, see spread pass game. We've got everything going on. And our guys are managing it, you know. So not only do we have to handle our installation, but then we have to manage it against all the different complexities that, you know, it would be one thing if, um, you know, we got an 11 personnel and threw it all over the place. I think guys can handle that pretty easily. But, you know, when you're an unbalanced and you're in all the different things that we do, um, it tests your rules and principles and makes sure that you know. And I think that's really helping our, our players defensively. Switching gears really quickly, Austin, <clears throat> Austin Romain, what are you seeing from him specifically, and what has impressed you the most with, from last year to where he is now? Austin remains an upper echelon player. I mean, he's a really good football player. He's an athletic kid that we knew that. We knew his physical. He's got mental toughness. Last year, I think he just got caught up in how long a season is. When you're a true freshman, he started off hot. You know, we liked him. Thought he'd be a good in reserve role. Daniel Green got hurt. All of a sudden, he's playing a lot more, and he did well initially. And I think by Week eight, nine, ten, when his body and his mind are starting to wear down, that's a lot different intensity than high school football, and uh, I think it caught up to him a little bit. But then he retooled himself, and this spring he was awesome. And we were kind of waiting to see if there would be an encore performance of that this fall, and there has been. He's been sensational. Joe, who would you say is the quarterback of this defense right now? Boy, <laughs> I'd say we're a uh, what do they call that? A dual quarterback system. Um, I, I really would. You know, the, the easy answer is Austin Moore. And I think if you asked 
he's kind of an unquestioned leader. You know, people, he has everybody's ear and everybody's respect because of all the things he's been through, because of how steady he is every day, because of how humble he is in, in the things that he does with, with all of what he's done. Um, so, you know, he's certainly a, a leader, but as far as who's out there talking, um, man, I, we've seen an emergence of, of, you know, from the corner room, Jacob Parrish, Keenan Garber, you know, I haven't heard those guys in the past. They're, they're, they're loud. Marquis Siegel, Jordan Riley's a good communicator. VJ's an excellent communicator, VJ Payne. Um, you know, we actually did a walkthrough yesterday because I wanted to impress on the young guys. This is kind of a weird, we took five minutes and did this. I wanted to impress on the young guys just how much those guys communicate. So we had the young guys kind of stand around and I put out some offensive formations and gave uh, our starters some calls and just the pre-snap communication that was going on with those guys just was uh, electric. It was awesome. And it was a great lesson for some of those younger guys, the Wesley Fairs, the, you know, the guys that are going to come up and be really good players for those guys to hear what's really going on out there. It's more than just lining up and knowing what your keys is. Man, it's helping everybody else out with what you might see through your pre-snap process. So it's, it's uh, quarterback guy by committee. Uh, I was also curious when you do bring back, uh, I know you lost some guys, but you still bring back a lot of experience, have a lot of depth. As a defensive coordinator, does that allow you to be more creative and do some things that we haven't seen in the past this season? Yeah, and you got and, and you got to rethink some of our rules and <clears throat> principles too with regards to how we may adjust to different things. Um, you know, f for me, I always try to keep it a, a little bit of a moving target. If you get too stagnant in what you do, um, you know, maybe what you do against unbalanced or what you do against certain formations, um, people are, are going to find that. There's a lot of good coaches that will find that and find some way to expose you with that. So um, sometimes when you have guys that are so embedded in those rules, it's hard to change them. When you get new guys, to your point, uh, sometimes it's easier to just say, okay, guys, instead of doing this like we've always done it, we're going to do it this way. And uh, there's some of that. Um, I guess the couple of positions where maybe depth were a little bit of an uncertainty, a nose tackle and maybe middle linebacker. Do you feel like you've addressed those pretty well so far? Yeah, I think we're, I think we're doing well at nose tackle. With the two guys that we mentioned, you know, um, Asher Tomaszewski has been, been a solid, solid three. Um, you know, we brought Malcolm Alcorn Crowder in as a transfer. Um, he's uh, done a good job. Um, you know, it's it's a different game probably than what he's been used to. So he's just, you know, learning how to practice hard and do that stuff, but clearly has ability. I'll tell you, a guy that's going to be a good player in time is Holden Bass. Um, you know, he's a Kansas walk-on that's a uh, tough son of a gun. I don't know if he'll help us this year or not, maybe. But in time, he'll be a name that people will know. Uh, and, and Mike Backer, I'm sorry. Um, and kind of a guy that's emerged for us a little bit. Uh, you know, we've we've played a lot of guys in there. Um, Austin Romaine, as we've talked about, Bo Palmer's been very solid, um, which was which was great to see. Uh, he had some health things in the spring that he's over. Um, a guy that's emerged in that spot in that room has been Terry Kirksey, and you know Terry's a guy that hasn't um, got a lot of field time for us, but he's playing fast. I mean, he kind of sees where he is, and he's kind of playing with desperation, and it's caught our eye he's been sensational Terry Kirksey's been a guy that's that's uh, that you'll see on some Saturdays was that just a guy that maybe kind of a it started to slow down for finally or it could be um same kind of thing as as Malcolm uh, Alcorn Crowder is that you know he came from from a junior college and and you know he played played at, at a great level at junior college but um you know when he got here I think the volume of installation the intensity of practice was was a little bit um much for him and you know it, it affected him last year and then he had some some health things last year too he was okay in the spring you know um, neither good or bad and then this this fall he's been he's been awesome so it's it's interesting it's interesting to, it's, it's interesting to see uh where his uh where his season's going to take him um van mentioned yesterday with the, the helmet communication uh that it's a little bit difficult in defense, especially if you're going against the team that's playing tempo. Is that? Yeah. Uh, how has that gone so far, and is that a bit of a challenge? It's been it's been it's been good, I guess. Um, um, 
my philosophy on it is you're not going to be able to use it all the time. And I don't know how different coaches are thinking about using it. You know, one of the things I did in the off season was I talked to some NFL guys and uh, and how they use it. And, and even at that level, guys use it different ways. You know, at that level, everybody's huddling, so that's one way that they get their, their calls in. We're still going to have our signal system ready. We're going to have to for, for just what you mentioned, tempo and those those uh, situations. But um, one of the one of the pieces of advice that that the NFL people said is don't say too much on there. You know, you don't want to be on there saying, "Hey, it's second and eight. Hey, they're seventy percent run. They like, you know out of they like split zone out of." You know, I, I don't know if that's the right way to 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 put into into our guys' heads. I just want to get them a call. I want to get their cleats in the ground, and I want them to go. And I've never been the you know, philosophically, there's two different kinds of defensive coordinators. There's the guys that are going to wait. You guys have seen these guys. Uh, they're going to wait. Brent Venables is a, is a guy that comes to mind. You see sometimes their guys aren't lined up right away because he's wanting to see the formation before he gives them the call. So sometimes they get the call the very last second. got to get in there go and, and go. And that's nothing wrong with that. There's a lot of guys that have success like that. I can name a lot of guys like that. Brent Venables is obviously one of them that's had a lot of success with that. Um, another way is uh, kind of the theory that I ascribe to is if I'm doing my homework on down and distance and on tendency and, and those kind of things, and I and the stuff we do is sound, I just want to get them a call, get their cleats in the ground, get their eyes pointed forward, and let's go play. And so I don't try to ever be too cute with that stuff. I want to get these guys a call, so let, let them go through their pre-snap process, let them – play fast you know instead of making a bunch of checks and trying to be perfect let's just let's get 11 guys running in the same direction and we'll be okay so that's so I don't know if it's going to affect the defensive side of the ball at K-State all that much uh, you've been pretty consistent with being able to find a safety in the portal every time you need a safety out of the <laughs> portal uh, what has gone into that and what has Jordan Riley done for you well I, maybe maybe it's my good looks I don't know <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I think we're looking for – I really vibe well with guys that love football. I really vibe well with – I don't vibe well maybe. I mean, I don't know. I don't vibe that well with guys that are just all about the flash of being in the portal. And so what we've done is we've found kids that maybe aren't the highest profile names out there. They jump in the portal. Maybe there's not 70 schools that are recruiting them. Um, but we're finding kids that really love the game, and we're finding guys that want to get better, we're finding guys that want to get developed that, for whatever reason, have hit a wall where they're at. And um, Jordan is that. Jordan loves football. He loves practice. He loves meetings. He loves learning. Um, you know, Marquise is the same way. I mean, just hit home runs with those guys. Josh Hayes, you're right. I mean, we've had a good string. Drake Cheatham. I mean, you could go on, on down the line. Sincere, I could I, – you know, you don't have to stop me. But um, – you know, I think maybe it, it's just that um, with my experience and with Coach Kleiman's experience, we can find out who those guys really are. And then we walk away from the guys that aren't like that, like Poison. And, uh, um, you know, we, we've we've done that too. I mean, we've seen those guys too, and, and, and fortunately we've landed on the right guys. You mentioned your, your three starters back there, B.J. Marquise <laughs> and, and Jordan. Um, Give me a breakdown of what's behind them, yeah. and who do you think will be where? Colby McAllister's been sensational. Colby McAllister's playing uh, at a level close to them. Um, he'll he'll he's played a couple of spots back there for us. He's backed up uh, Jordan, and he's backed up VJ. And so uh, I feel we have a little bit of position flexibility with him. Jack Fabris has been really good. He had a really good spring. He's had he's continued that this fall. Uh, he's uh, backing up Jordan right now. And uh, I feel he can run the show back there just as, as well as Jordan can. Uh, at free safety, Kendra Steiger is a, a guy that's um, been um, rock solid. He's just a tough, tough kid that um, will mix it up with you, has some man ability. Um, and he can come in there and give us uh, some, some snaps for Marquise. Um, but it goes deeper than that. Uh, you know, Daniel Cobbs has also been a free safety behind Marquise, just tremendously athletic, uh, and, and ha again gives us some uh, ability to play out in space. Um, and then uh, Wesley Fair has been a, a great uh, player. We've got him playing strong safety right now behind VJ. Um, but 
man, I, Wes, I really feel like we could get some snaps out of Wesley this year too. You know, and, and to be honest with you, some of the guys that I haven't mentioned are probably at levels where maybe some of our twos have been in years prior. You know, when, when you talk about, you know, Mikey Bergeron, Jet Deneen, Trey Krause, some of those guys could probably play for us too. It's just the competition and that room is really, really stiff.